Hey everyone, got an amazing episode to share with you guys today. If you're an engineer in finance or healthcare sector and you are dealing with a large stack of documents, right? Say bank statements or invoices, have you guys had an experience of going through all of these documents and just immediately have a huge headache, right? Maybe the goal is to extract certain information, maybe the goal is to check out a particular number after a particular entry. What are we supposed to do? So I'm actually amazed to share this content with you guys today about this book review with Pat Publisher on NeuroSearch. So if this is the first time you guys watch this video, how that works is they send me a book just like this. I review the book and I give an honest feedback. Other than that, there's no monetary issue. So hopefully the review of the content of this video can serve as a good reference for you guys if you decide to buy this book or not. So, with that being said, let's get into the content. First of all, I always give a feedback and review of the author. And this book actually has a huge team. So, I'm going to use the first author, Bo Wang, as a lead example. So, Bo Wang has been the lead machine learning engineer at Gina AI. And for those of you who don't know Gina AI, it's actually a leading software platform provider that has an expertise and huge amount of experience in ML ops, dev ops, and so on and so forth. They've been in this field for a long time and they provided the necessary infrastructure that's needed for the companies, the industrial clients to develop the machine learning models to drive their business decisions. So it's extremely important for me to cover this because this actually is not just an academic use. It goes wide into the industry. And I'm actually curious to see how that played out. So let's come back to the author team. The lead author is Bo Wang. His expertise and background is in computer science and specifically in information retrieval. So information retrieval actually serve as the major backbone for neural search when it comes to huge stack of documents. So right off the bat, this is the kind of the information that I'm looking for, right? I want to know I'm in good hands when I read a book. I want to know the authors have this kind of expertise and background. And Frankly speaking, it's obvious that this team does. So Bo Wang is a lead machine engineer and it has also a huge team of co-authors that organize the content of this title. So here's also a huge shout out to the other co-authors, Chupam, Susanna, and Feng. All of you guys did an amazing job and after reading this title, I actually felt like I know a little bit of something. I learned a little bit of something. So with that being said, let's get into the content of the book. First things first. You want to show the audience what this book is about and why the proposed methods in this book is valuable, right? But you don't want to just directly say, ah, the proposed method is good. Please read that. But that's not how things work, right? So it's interesting that to read this book, the first few chapters really take on the literature review type of role and functionality to go into literature, to go into the conventional models and just to see what's going on, what are the pros, what are the cons, right? So when it comes to neural search, here's an easy example. You have a sentence of 10 words, and I'm curious about one word, a particular object per se, or a location per se. And the goal is simple. The goal is to come up with the algorithm to detect what that information is, and where is it, and what the location is in that document. Like for instance, I could be writing a very simple document. I can say I want to go to Trader Joe's to do some grocery shopping at 4 p.m. So the location is Trader Joe's and perhaps that carries more information for the analysis to carry on. Now maybe it's useful for business case, maybe to drive business decision. I'm curious to see where this Trader Joe's could be given some information about its clients. So when that happens, the first goal to scan through the stack of document is to locate where that word is. Trader Joe's. So it's in the middle of the sentence. Well, after when I say the words, I am going to, right? So the conventional search is to check all these words one by one. And maybe you have a for loop, maybe you can be smart about it, work out some smart data structure, check the unique words, and so on and so forth. But the name of the game is you still need to have some sort of a loop going on to check through these words one by one and see if they match certain threshold. And if they do, boom, you have an answer, you can move on to the next step. Or in other words, this could be some sort of 
medical documents, right? And then you're just scanning patient's ID or barcode, and maybe that lead to something. Maybe you scan a stack of documents that's a thousand pages long, and really what you're looking for is something like an invoice number or somebody's address, so you know where to mail the postcard to. So when it comes to tasks like this, neural search is going to be the key component and backbone of that algorithm that you deploy. Now usually this is carried out to production by engineer in your company. So that's interesting, right? Now it's interesting because we're talking about some sort of search algorithm that needs to quickly scan through huge volume of information and give that trigger work. That's the idea of the research. That's the main component of this field. So it's really fascinating that the team of authors of this content really dive into a list of algorithms that have been done in the past and show us what they are. And then they use that as the motivation. So that immediately rings a bell. If you work as an engineer in a company before, you know the headaches, right? And then before the authors dive into their proposed technology, which is the Gina platform, they actually explain a little bit about the foundation of vector representation. So there's a little bit of math going on here, and I'm actually happy to see it because I don't really just want to see the software, plug in the code, uh, plug in the data, and pop out some results. I don't know how I could trust them, right? So a little bit of mathematics and a little bit of technical review can be very important. So the idea is very straightforward. To fill that gap in, what these authors are doing for this book is it provides a few chapters in the middle to explain the matrix representation and how matrix works and how vectors work when we're embedding a large dimension down to a smaller dimension. And that's important. And that serves as a key for language embedding. So now we're talking about natural language processing, language embedding, and all that fancy stuff that you probably heard from the website hugging face and all these amazing models are all nailed down. So they got all the buzzword covered, and I'm actually to see how some of these models that I've actually learned before is reused and retaught in this book using Gina platform. So really it's a great material, and I think it's a lot of valuable lesson to be learned. And on top of that, the platform is highly modularized. I can break things apart. I can put things back together in pretty much any combination that I want. And then just to sweeten the deal a little bit, this book also provides the GitHub platform. So you can pretty much go onto the GitHub, download the code, and you can start running your own algorithm, build your own platform, and so on and so forth, which I really appreciate because I'm a hands-on person, and the way I learn is to learn with the code, right? If I just read through the book, that's great, but I need to see how things turn out in production, and I need to see where things break in coding. So that's what I want to share. I think it's an amazing book. You guys are in good hands if you do decide to buy this book. And here in the last minute of the video, I just want to say this. This is something I've actually been dreaming about having when I was in grad school, right? Because when I go on to job market and when I go on interviews and have my first job, I actually struggle through the concept of what it means to say when you're an engineer, what does it mean? when you are deploying a model in production. So one major theme that this book is bringing on the table is from chapter one, chapter two, you introduce the history, you introduce the mathematics. And then it goes to chapter six and chapter seven, things are in production. So you actually get to visualize the entire cycle of the project end to end, and specifically in neural information retrieval, which I really appreciate because I was actually hoping to learn some of this when I was in school which unfortunately is not taught, right? And I really can't blame anybody. It's just something like from academic because most professors don't come from industry background. So I can't really hold them accountable for that. But it's good that we have this book now, right? Because it's filling that gap. And I believe it's a gap that every student will have if you're going through academic and make that transition from academic to industry. So with that being said, hope you like this video. If you do like it, give a like and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.